Studio 46 is a one-man video game making machine because after just a few months of their first ever title, The Companion, a cinematic adventure set in a fantasy world, David is back once more making another game and I am here to talk to him about all the details surrounding it. But don't take my word for it, it's time for us to dive into the adventure. A brief history on me real quick is I just wanted to make a game. The goal going into it was to release it. That was the main goal. Okay. Um, the indie developers in the community, like releasing a game is one of the biggest hurdles to get over. That was my main objective. That's also why it's very narrow in scope. It's a story game. You know, there's not a lot of extras to it, really. I have, um, to, I have to ask really quick, just to insert this one. What was your, um, did you kind of have any game development background or kind of what was what was that like leading into the development for this? I've always wanted to make games, but I was never really versed in programming. Like, uh, I don't know C Sharp or C++, these languages to make games, but I could learn languages. Mm -hmm. I've taught myself like web development and stuff, but they're a little simplified compared to this. Basically, I when the Unreal Engine became free is when I decided to try to make something. Uh, before the Companion, I was learning the engine for two and a half years. Nothing really materialized, but I had had enough and I wanted to make something. So with the post launch, so you finally get to launch and the game's out there, kind of what was the what were the takeaways from it? Kind of what was the fan reaction to it? Obviously, you know, I've seen your ratings for your game. They're majority very positive, um, which is right. always great to see. Um, but kind of what was your takeaways personally, whether, you know, it was this didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to or the, the story was exactly how I wanted it to be. When you look at it overall at the end of the day, kind of what were those takeaways? Yeah, so I had to, I took this five month break from the game to kind of step away. And now I can actually reevaluate, like evaluate it and see what I got from it. And some of the expectations and goals I had had were, uh, you know, I, as I mentioned, to release the game. And it shouldn't really come down to financial, but one of the goals I had read, you want to get like 20% of your wish list as a purchase within the first year. So I had previously published the game, had about 6,000 wish lists, which I thought was pretty good for I had no marketing. I had nothing set up before creating this game. I created all my social media and everything the same time as I started making this game. If I started from scratch last August, and um, to get 6,000 wish lists, I was very proud of that. And 20% with you know a little over 1,000 copies in the first year is what I am was my expectation, and it's actually close to a thousand sold in five months. So. I'm pretty happy with all those numbers. I tried to keep costs very minimal. However, I have not recouped my costs yet, even though I did my best to make it as minimal as possible. I am still at a, it's a pretty good loss. I mean, I think I'll recover it eventually. In terms of the actual game, I'm very proud with the product. It was 10 months of development from zero to end. And uh, like I said, marketing everything, zero to final product, 10 months. Uh, I've just been logging back into the game actually and I re am remembering it now after taking that break and I'm like actually it impresses me what I was able to accomplish in that time. I have to ask with that five months of kind of stepping away from it was it was it kind of hard to release it and then just take that big step back and like not be involved with it as much as you had been for that heavy amount of development that had to be it that had to take kind of a toll on you right? I didn't step out immediately I pushed two quick updates and a hot fix on within like the first week of the release. The uh, development took a toll. As we're sitting here, it's, you know, 10.30 p.m. Mm. my time. And this is usually when I start development. And then I'm up till two in the morning and then I'm sleeping for five hours and going to work. Mm -hmm. So I did that for 10 months. I did. I worked almost every single day for 10 months doing that. Uh, and then I would recover sleep on the weekends a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it was a big toll. I had to step out, step back, relax, you know, settle down and 
get my health back a little bit. What, looking back at the title, if anything, would you have changed? Whether, you know, development, story, whatever it may be, even like how you develop the game, your scheduling, what kind of would you have as your takeaway of, I would have changed this completely if I'd had the chance? The thing that got me at the end was localization. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot on that. I actually spent more on that than the actual game itself, and that's what I'm trying to recover from. Maybe I wouldn't dive so deeply into that end, you know, getting it localized in like 11 languages or 12 languages. <laughs> uh, in terms of the actual game, it might have been beneficial for me to drag out the release just to get more wish lists. I could have maybe uh, tested it longer as well just to like get the frustration points handled sooner. But as a single indie developer first time, I don't have a massive group of people to test. I was sending keys to like anyone who expressed a lot of interest. I was giving them a key. Can you test this, test it? I, I, there's not much I would do over. I would try to get more testers and uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with that in mind, you know, you'd mentioned you kind of hit the ground running with development. You really hadn't had a lot of prior experience in it. You said Unreal is what you built the game within, correct? Yes. Okay, so kind of with that in mind, from a development standpoint, looking back on it, is there anything from a strategy perception you would change? Is there anything you would kind of it was there anything you found much more difficult than you know the other things within development that you kind of would focus more in on or you would kind of skirt around a little bit kind of how was that process for you as you kind of went away from the game uh everything's very difficult and it gets harder as you uh dive into it there's things i thought oh this will be a quick easy thing and it took maybe weeks and i was like oh no i'm spending so much time on this it's really shouldn't be a big focus and then I spent a lot wasted a lot of time on certain things there's there was a little bit of um, feature bloat I would say things I didn't anticipate at first and then I added and then as you're getting feedback and realize oh this needs you need to add a little more here and there you start realizing the complexities and adding layers upon layers of it, it the whole thing's challenging mm -hmm. um, I'd say the art which is what's great gets praised the most was the easiest thing that and was gonna that was gonna be my question because a lot of a lot of developers say the art aspect of their game is the hardest part to kind of get involved with and kind of make what they want it to be that was i was wondering especially with a game that is so heavily focused on it if that kind of was something that slowed you down a little bit um it's stylized which helps and mm -hmm. I, for this particular title i didn't use any humans so i didn't re have to deal with animations and making them look realistic. I used particles for as much as possible. The wolf itself is uh, like glowing. You don't see much detail in the coat, like the fur or anything. You don't see really the detail. So it's just kind of like, it's a very stylized. And then the landscape is one of the, in my opinion, easiest things to create. You can get trees, bushes, all the landscape stuff so many different places have that available and then you just got to stylize it re-texture re -texture it change the colors and then honestly the biggest reason it stands out is uh, lighting the lighting was is massive and then post-processing uh, there's a lot you can do with the post-process and then so you know you would mentioned it was a pretty long grind to get this game out and then here we are only a couple months later and you've announced another one already so kind of how quickly did you just jump into the development for that i would imagine you it would have had to have been fairly quickly after you launched the companion around month eight of the companion now 10 months is actually not that long mm -hmm. like most indie developers spend two years or more on their game but i i had a deadline from day one to do it in like nine months and then i pushed it a month and uh that i was trying to make a game super focused and I, release was very important but by month eight I was starting to experience some burnout it was kind of the the bug fixing and the polishing phases and it was just like the grind was really hitting me and the lack of sleep so by month eight I saw Unreal Epic Games put out the MetaHuman technology and Unreal Engine 5 early release and I start dabbling with that a little bit so I kind of made a decision at that point, I want to use this human technology that they've developed and give it a try. So I went back to 10 years ago and looked at some writings I had and found a script. And it was, it's maybe like 10 pages. 
And it's something I've always like, oh, this would be a cool story. I want to make this. It's in space, you know. And I wanted to, it was originally written for like maybe a film mm. type of thing. But I couldn't do zero G or anything. That would be like cost prohibitive. Yeah. But when they came out with this, I was like, ah, oh, this would be perfect. Let's just give it a try and see what we could do. It's a big, a big jump from you know the companion to this and just in terms of i guess story and everything else in between is very different style and everything else so kind of taking away from the companion what besides just the new um, tech that came out for unreal what else was something you wanted to build on so the companion i was i feel very successful with the art style and the story i would say is uh for as quickly as it was written and then put in production and everything. I feel it turned out well. Not everybody quite gets it. And some people get it and love it. Some people question what they just experienced. I, I personally think it's a good story I could build on in the future. Like the companion may not be, it might not be the end for that game. There may be more to come. Okay. Uh, like I feel there's a good world, a good foundation set up there. It's a, but I needed to take a break from that world. So mm -hmm. this is a, massive jump in everything using like humans and technology but the style i feel is similar i feel i have kind of this i'm developing a style unique to me with like the blown out lighting and the very contrasty shadow like it's kind of similar i'm just using a different subject matter and in a different environment one of the most challenging parts with this so far is how to make the space environments beautiful hmm. you know also there's no landscapes which was kind of my cheat for the companion to create everything quickly you know you just f foliage brush everything down now i'm in blender modeling things and it's taken me weeks to create like a single room and then i'm trying to find assets that complement it as well take shortcuts where i can but i'm doing a lot of modeling which with the companion i was trying to avoid as much as possible yeah uh so this is going to be a much longer grind and I'm trying to take my time with it. Do you, with the companion, I know you mentioned you had like a set date that you wanted to get it out by or, or period. With this game, do you kind of have that same strategy or just with the difficulty, is it something you kind of wanted to make a more open ending as well? Where you like, you don't quite know where it's coming out, but you have like a hope that it's going to be out at this certain point. I think deadlines are good. So mm -hmm. I've, I don't have a super strict one right now. I just have a goal of like a demo in end of 2020, 2022 or early 23. So I'm, which is actually much longer than it took me to make the whole companion game. So just to get a demo of this game by that point is kind of my first milestone and then go from there. So with this game, I have to ask just from like, a content standpoint is it going to be much larger than the companion or are you trying to keep the story kind of close to that and just kind of it's a narrative story but is there going to have is there going to be more of like an open aspect to it or is it going to kind of stick to that narrative linear driven story this story is actually not apparently not that unique uh i was made aware there's a film the passengers that came out in like 2016 and it is very very similar to what I just presented in my trailer like I'm people waking up early from cryostasis or whatever like okay and so now I actually got to watch that movie and see what they did but uh <laughs> <laughs> I've but I've I'm... never seen the movie myself but I know exactly what you're talking about they've never been a game though you know you have that so yeah. <laughs> but I have I don't even know if I want to see the movie because mm -hmm. I want to have I have my ideas and I don't want to be swayed you know yeah so um it is a story-based game. There are things I want to do differently. In on the Steam page, I've I've written down kind of the objectives. I want to have like a branching story where you're just you can actually decide the outcome. I want to have it's a survival game. I liken it more to a survival game that's like you're out in the middle of the woods, but this time you're stuck on a spaceship. You have to gather the resources available to you, stay alive. There's I want there to be a death. Like death is something you can actually experience, whereas the companion can't i have to ask with a game like this the companion it leans into the magic aspect would this game lean much more into like a crafting aspect i haven't really thought of crafting i'll try to keep the scope narrow so i can actually release it still a lot of um collecting items and managing your health 
uh, managing your temperature, like dealing with the environment. If you play the companion, I think one of the biggest critiques is it's there's not a lot of gameplay. It's a lot. It's story, and if you're there, if you if you're not someone who likes story, then you kind of miss the whole point of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, with this game, I kind of the story is going to play a big part. It's a story game, but I want there to be a lot of gameplay elements to where you make decisions. Those decisions will have consequences and matter, and you can still be happy playing it even if you don't care about the story. Are you Help trying me. to are you trying to avoid a Kickstarter or or you want to lean into that as well with this game? So the goal with the trailer is to kind of show what I want to make. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people look at that trailer and be like, where's the gameplay? What do you do in it? Well, the game's not made yet, you know. I yeah. I put a lot of pretty scenes together. These levels, they're levels that I can uh, I have a character and I can fly around in these levels and I but the main game needs to be created so yeah. I created the trailer as a really an announcement of what the game is what I'm working on the steam page is out the website's out getting that initial announcement out there you know this is my next uh, project like this game the trailer shows a lot that was a big trailer to make yeah uh, it's two minutes and 40 something seconds it, I couldn't even put the whole thing on Twitter with, without spending money for their ad program or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I probably made it too long. There was some reason behind that is because this was the big reveal of what I'm planning planning to make, and I intend to like use a lot of this footage for promotional and other websites. Every website has a different recommendation. Um, TikTok, once you can go up to three minutes. Facebook doesn't recommend anything less than three minutes, mm -hmm. and. Uh, if I do Kickstarter, they want like a seven minute intro video. And uh, so this trailer is intended to show, intended to be used a lot of places. That's why I made it so long. It's not a typical game trailer. It's uh, like a cinematic, but all the footage comes right from the engine. And I intend to make the game as close to what the trailer depicts. The levels are, the levels do exist. I just need to uh, rearrange them cohesively <laughs> into a cohesive thing mm -hmm. and uh, the characters there's like seven or eight outfits in the trailer I've had to go in and like blend with blender and customize like some outfits I made myself some I found online and I intend to have like you can uh, your outfit will matter with how you deal with the environment and stuff and different space suits and stuff like that so. were the characters kind of the longest part for the entire trailer or was it kind of the environments they were within? The, the environment started to drag just because you're literally trying to create everything. Mm. Um, so you'll see a, some of the environments reused here and there, and um, but you're trying to put little props in there. And then I did add some gameplay functionality hovering over the, some objects will display a pop-up of what it is and like you can ex inspect it and stuff. So there are some gameplay elements I was creating at the same time the character you can play in these levels as the character you mm. just can't really do anything right now there's no like story implemented yeah but the um characters animations are still not where i want them to be so i didn't want to show that and to render in 4k at 60 frames per second i have to set everything up anyway yeah. so it's going to be a rendered trailer no matter what otherwise i had complaints about frame frame rate loss and stuff so yeah, every shot it's not going to be direct out of the engine. I don't have like a supercomputer that's going to render it live uh, for that quality. And with this whole release of everything, I wanted to gauge interest. Is this something people are interested in? It's like 250 wish lists in, in a week or so. And, you know, compared to the Companion, Companion was getting about 100 wish lists a month. Okay. Uh, until I did like the Steam Fest thing, which I got like a. Uh, 4,000 from that one week or whatever. So the companion, it took me in six months, I had 600 wish lists. In this game, I'm already at like 250 out in like a week. So it just had a pretty good post on Imager with 120,000 views. And uh, so interest seems high right now. And I'll, my goal with this is to release like more information, development updates, show what I'm working on, give some looks of uh, 
the development, so create like dev logs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if interest remains high, there's always I'll try maybe try Kickstarter. I have and... I have to ask as a kind of final closing out question. Since you've been working on this game lately, do you kind of miss working on the companion, or is that kind of you know you're glad to be on to the next thing? The funny thing is, my goal after re announcing the game is now I'm working on an update to the companion. Okay, so you did miss Something. it. <laughs> like the fixes are nothing major it's more cosmetic stuff like oh this didn't look right i'll you know fix that i didn't like the main menu screen i'm fixing that and stuff yeah i didn't want to leave people that bought the game just like high and dry i felt that was a little dishonest to uh make it release it and then abandon it i don't want to abandon it there you have it. That is everything we know about his upcoming project. Ladies and gentlemen, David's social media, his websites, his Steam pages, everything you could think of is down below. Make sure you go over there, check it all out. But before you do, make sure to subscribe. Go ahead and hit that like button and give me a comment. But until next time, I am Nick. This is the Side Quest. And as always, stay gaming, ladies and gentlemen. Take it easy. Yeah, I ain't taking a backseat. I'm passing anybody else who is rapping. I'm nasty. Ain't nobody able to catch me. They gasping. They cannot compare. They can't match me. I'm at half speed.